Hi, I'm the developer, well, maker of the map Chouseled. And I'd like to take a little walkthrough of it to show, one, all the secrets so you don't have to tear your hair out trying to find them, and two, some of the uh, thought that went in behind designing the map. With that said, let's begin. Now, you may have read the readme for the file, but before we go any further, let me just say, if you have not played the map and want to experience it for yourself, stop the video right here. There are jokes and tricks in this map that are best experienced raw for the first time. Still here? Alright. You asked for it. So, any decent map or math set comes with difficulty settings. Some of them just change the number of monsters or pickups or whatever, but I wanted to make this map so that anybody could reasonably experience it. And since punching revenants with your fist is not for everyone, the easiest difficulty, I'm Too Young to Die, features weapon placement, so that you can basically play this map like a regular Doom level. Now, I'm not here to gatekeep, and I'm certainly not here to shame. Experience this map how you want. Turn on cheats, no clip, that's fine. Just understand that if you don't play the map, the scripting will break. Guaranteed. Also, with that said, if you do want to punch Revenants, I will judge you harshly for not playing on Ultra Violence, because Ultra Violence is the gentleman's difficulty. I'm joking, play how you want. So, the map starts here. Pretty atmosphere. We've got Message for the Archvile playing in the background. I wanted to give the impression this is going to be a moody, spooky, deliberate map. You can look out these windows and see snowy plains. Ooh, it's dark and spooky. What's this? We have a Plutonia-esque light. Step on it. Door opens. What do you do? Glowing skull. Really spooky. This is where I teach you, if you haven't read the readme, the only way to proceed is to punch. There's not a single use object in this entire map. This kind of goes in the theme with, with just, you know, running around punching skeletons. I've got armor here, real hard to miss, you can see it through the door. And we come upon our first secret, each of these three torches. Individually, they don't give you much in the way of feedback, actually they don't give you any feedback, making it really easy to miss when you punch one or two of them. You might be inclined to move on. You hit the third one though, boom. Quake sequence complete. You know something happened, but you're not going to find out till much later. Doors closed again, punch. And we can go through. Now this is a one-way door, so once you're through here, you cannot go back and reclaim uh, the secrets. Now you're in here. Shadowy ambience going into the light. When she, when she hear you, another courtyard. Normally you'd have monsters about chewing on your face. None yet. Oh boy, what do I have in store? Ah, health pickup. Five of them. Armor pickup. On lower difficulties, you get ten of them. Also, on I'm Too Young to Die, there'd be a shotgun right here. But before we go any further, let's just stop, take a look at the roof of that building. Now, how did I do this? That's not normal mapping. See that little uh, cutoff part under the crosshair? That's all done with portals. Basically, there's a whole separate part of the map that is this courtyard and building, and if you look further beyond, the main warehouse area can be seen in the background from here. All of that's fake. All right, so let's start the map. You go up here to this, other, to this other device, which I've already demonstrated, is a switch of some kind. Hey, I got jokes. Now if you punch early, you activate that skeleton, otherwise you can wait several seconds for him to, for him to just stand there and you need to take in the situation. And where'd he go? Oh, this has never happened before. There we go. Now, the basics of punching revenants are covered very well by Decino, but I'm going to cover the basics here. Within a certain distance, a skeleton will not shoot at you. Instead, he'll try to chase you down. In close, he'll throw a punch. 
his punch is weaker than his missile, so it's better for him to it's better to eat a punch than it is to eat a missile. Fortunately, debating rockets when it's just one revenant is pretty easy, and you can do a dance with them. Whoops, in and out until he takes takes a pain hit. Once you hear that pain sound, he will shoot at you if you step away from him. I find it's best just when you hear the pain state, back up, let him shoot, and dodge, rather than trying to go in for another punch. Ouch. And I'm a dummy. So round two. Let's see if I can focus and not get killed. So using that information we just went over, let's see if I can actually kill this guy. Damn it, stop pain saving. Alright, he's dead. And the music fades away. How eerie. I wonder what else I have in store. So you step into here. Now, you can just skip that revenant. You don't have to fight him. There's nothing scripted to his death other than the music change. So you look out here, into the plains beyond, see some torches, see some guys roasting on spits. Not much, not much else to look at here. But... A trail of bread comes leading down a hallway. Now, once you enter right here, this space and this space are not the same. There's a portal right here that leads you into a different area. This is so that I can make it look like you're walking in a hallway inside this castle wall without resorting to 3D sectors. And to further reinforce that illusion, oh look, you see the same guy on the spit, the same torch. That is not the same guy. That is not the same torch. That's part of that dummy area I told you about. Actually, it's not part of that dummy area. I made a third dummy area just for this outside part. <clears throat> so you go further in here, and hey, this right here is another portal. We're now inside that first building you saw. Door comes down. You're locked in. What's this? An exit? Nah, it's fake. Power's out. Another light pad. Oh boy, what could happen here? Now, it is entirely possible you could come out of that first fight with just a few health left over. Between the armor pick pickups I gave you and what's about to happen here, even if you took a real bad beating in that first fight, you should be at 100 health and right around 60 armor. That should give you enough to take two maximum damage missile rolls and survive. More or less. It's not guaranteed, but if you come out of that fight really, really healthy, you're guaranteed to be able to survive two missile, uh, Revenant missile hits. Probably more. So without further ado, let's get started. More jokes. Haha, -ha, I'm so funny. Okay, now we're actually playing Bone Trousel, which is a much more hectic, fast-paced uh, tune. We've got five Revenants all aggroed instantly on us. Let's start killing them. Same rules apply, only now we have to manage way more aggro. Ow. Now there is some help over here. Not much, but enough to keep you in the fight, maybe. Whoa! Shit. Alright, killing that third revenant opens up two more revenants up top. They're probably going to stay up there, and there's actually not much threat of them while we're down here. I'll explain that later. Alright, killing this revenant still leaves two of them locked up. Ah. I don't know how Decino narrates in fights at the same time. I can't do it. But let's continue. 
So now we've got these four revenants, but only two of them are loose. There are gaps so that these other two can shoot at you. When I kill one more, they'll be released. Alright, here they come. Ah, little bastard. Alright, last two. Alright, last revenant's dead. Music fades. Walls open. Let's stop for a minute and take a look around. So, this arena is still part of your tutorial. Only this time, instead of doing it bare knuckled, you have Berserk backing you up. Now, here's an important fact. Your Berserk punches deal about 10 times the amount of damage. I think it's 10 times, or it's 8 times. One of the two. Uh, t anyway, let's just go to 10 times the amount of damage that your regular punches do. There were nine revenants here. It should actually take you fewer punches, based on depending on how RNG treats you. It should take you f fewer punches to clear this fight than it did the first one. The only main difference is the geometry is a little bit different, and you have to deal with more uh, projectiles coming your way. You also don't want to get bottled into any one area, but there's plenty of area to manage the revenants you're fighting with. These pillars, although not wide, are plenty wide enough to manage most of the missiles coming your way. Another feature, you see these beams? They're not ju just for decoration, although they are definitely for decoration. That beam right there will block the vast majority of Revenant missiles fired from up here. So you don't really have to worry about managing those projectiles while you're clearing out the remaining Revenants down here. Not only that, but this staircase is a really convenient place to fight from. It keeps most of the revenants from coming downstairs, and it makes a convenient uh, bit of cover to hide behind while the others up here try to shoot at you. So we're done with this arena. Let's go down into the hallway. Come down here. Oh, look, there's some health and armor. Nice restock. We're ready to go for another fight. Now, as you can see, there's plenty of skulls here. And they serve to kind of disguise the fact that, hey, look at that Look at that skull. Similar palette, but obviously not the same. Teleportation noise. I wonder what that was. Well, you're going to find out. Step forward. Wall closes up. Oh, you're stuck in here. Hmm. That looks suspicious. Surprise, Revenant. Now, if he goes into pain state and shoots at you, you think, oh, well, that's guaranteed damage. That's BS. Not so much. These alcoves are just big enough that you can hide from a rocket from. If he fires, just step back a little bit, step into here, and you're safe. And then you get back to punching his head. Then. So you go through here, your typical uh, lift. Again, percussive maintenance and a little bit of uh, architecture to ease the monotony of what uh, normally a really tall lift would look like. The only problem I couldn't really solve too well was the fact that unless I wanted to resort to 3D floors, a bunch of 3D floors, I had to make the uh, lift narrow at the top. And I could have made it a little bit wider so you wouldn't get caught on it, but eh, it's not a big deal. Come out here. Oh look, we have breadcrumbs. Health, po health pots leading down a walkway. This could be an ambush, but really it was just uh, an incentive to get you to come down in here and hopefully look at the work I put in making these portals look over the dummy se sector so that it simulates you like you're actually in a real 3D space. Now there's no way to get over to that walkway without cheating, but if I drop down, you can see sky out there, but that's just regular sky. There's no uh, portals looking out over uh, the rest of the structure. So here we have what is the final arena. Got a big old 50 ton crane, whatever. Some lights, more lights. Got this thing in the middle. Really, this is a very bland space. This is what you get by punching that skull earlier on. So you come over here, and this starts the whole show. 
that goes down, waits a few seconds, and then the entire arena tilts. Music comes back. Uh oh, we're in it, boys. Now those revenants can't actually leave that space because there's a little gap right there, about one pic one pixel wide, one unit wide. So you just go in here, and you can punch them out. Easy peasy. The main thing was to get you to notice that they were looking at this console when these floors dropped. Again, no use switches. That's not a threat. That's a statement of intent. And that opens up the first stage of the arena. Very different from what it looked like it previously. I am sucking. Hang on, let me let me get some help. Oh god. I promise I'm not this bad normally. It's just really hard talking and fighting at the same time. Alright, this wave's done, and as soon as that last revenant dies, the switch pops up out of the floor. You can hit that switch early just by swinging your fist over the space it occupies, but that would leave all these revenants alive and for the next phase of the fight, making it more difficult for you. I don't recommend it, but you can if you want to. Alright, so that drops, and then the arena expands. Now this wave has six skeletons. The previous wave only had four revenants. Milo. SOB. Oh my god, would you please stop pain -sating? All right, so this phase looks the same as the previous phase. And really, it mostly is. We've had this second spot here and expanded the arena all the way out, almost to this wall. One important change was that in the previous phase, you could actually still get up here and walk all the way across down to there. But I've now closed that off. Not only that, but you can't get up into this room anymore. This is a theme that's going to continue. I punch this, and that opens the next phase. But first, there's some secrets to get. What the hell is with this wall? This is some sloppy texturing. Oh, hey, kids. It's fire blue. Everybody loves fire blue. I hate fire blue. Punch the fire blue. I like the kitties though. Hit the kitties. Nice kitties. Alright, next phase. Alright, when I punch this, this whole arena is going to tilt downwards towards here. This is going to drop down, releasing a batch of eight revenants. Now, I want to try and suck not too terribly, so I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of talking. It's not till they're almost dead. Managing numbers is a real important task. Oh crap, I'm gonna get my butt kicked. Now, there is reinforcements in here. If you kill all the revenants before you go in there, you cannot collect what's in there. So it's a bit of a secret, although it's not marked as a secret. Mainly because it's in plain sight the entire time.
Ah. Me? Alright, they're getting whittled down. Maybe I can do this without dying. Alright, they're dead. Now in there... Whoops, that's my chance. There's a small pitch black sector that leads into a link sector, leading to that room that the camera pointed to. It's normally closed, but once you kill that last revenant, it opens up. And now, that area is linked, so if I make a noise in here, it'll activate all those revenants. Uh-oh. How do I get to that? Well... Mostly, you yeah, don't. No. You missed your chance. Oh wait, no, you can still get it. Now this was the secret that you punched the skull for. Before we go any further, I want to show you something else. Yes, folks, that is the Revenant bus. I literally copy and pasted the architecture from Revenant bus by uh, Revenant 100 and plopped it in here. You'll see why in a second, but this is where all the revenants are coming from. We got some health, we got some armor, but this area is going to be very hostile very shortly. Plus, after you get done with that, hopefully you're fully stocked. So, I could start the fight just by punching thin air. In fact, let's do that. Let's see what happens. Clown car full of revenants. Oh no, I can't deal with 44 revenants all at once. What do I do? Yikes! Alright, find, find some cover. Alright, you want to get him back over here to... There we go. Ooh! Hey, hey, hey! Bastard. And I am not getting lucky with these uh, hits. Let me get some health. All right, the music just changed. And the Cyber Demon just died. It's time to clean up these revenants. The music changes right when you get to the last six revenants. Not only that, but it also starts this coming down. Now this music is from the Undertale trailer, but it also acts as a nice finale for the level. Ah. This comes all the way to the bottom, just a few seconds before the music stops. But because I suck, well, now you get to hear the music loop. If you try to activate this before all the revenants are dead, you get a message saying, nah, 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 nah. You gotta kill all the revenants first. But, we're at the end of the map. And that's that. I hope you enjoy playing this map. This was a fun little experiment for me because I'd never used ACS scripting before, and this is actually only the third Doom map I've ever made. Thanks for watching.